Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to have a look at the recent World Open games. In particular, I'm going to have a look at Michael Adams, who jointly won it with um, Gatakamski. Okay. So um, I'll give you a bigger. Actually, I'm just zooming in on the board myself. Okay. So this is. Um, in, in round one where Michael Adams was playing black. So we're going to flip the board and have a look at how Adams beat a, two, a poor 2292. So heavily outrated uh, by Michael Adams who's 2726. Um, so D4 we have uh, uh, an invitation for the Nimzo Indian but now we go into Queen's Indian territory because White's decided to play Knight F3. So Nimzu Indian fans will probably be thinking, well, they've, they've got to learn Queen's Indian territory as well. That's unfortunately, that's the necessary evil. If you're going to try and play the Nimzu Indian, you're going to be faced with this dull move, Knight F3. It's a bit of a fun killer, actually, in, in many different variations, just playing Knight F3. Uh, because, um, well, it's not offering the Knight to be pinned. Um, so, um, so what do we do about knight f3? Actually, this coincides with another a grandmaster game I, I saw recently, where a different strategy uh, was emphasised. That okay, there's nothing to pin uh, with bishop b4. Okay, so white's not getting the usual, uh, you know, the control of e4 square. But on the other hand, you know, e4 still might be vulnerable, and c4 might actually be vulnerable in certain Queen's Indian uh, variations. So actually, b6. Um, it creates an ambiguity actually. Is the bishop actually going to go here to target e4 or is it actually going to go here to target c4? Two candidate squares of attack. Uh, especially if white's considering you know g3 and bishop g2 then this c4 might be a bit more vulnerable actually. And in fact white's next move is to Fianchetto uh, the bishop g3. So we're going to leave you know potentially these two candidates for the bishop which one's more effective? Well, you guessed it. Adams um, played actually bishop a6. It's theory, but um, it's annoying for white. How does white uh, defend uh, the c4 pawn? There are various ways. I think I remember reading this years ago in some middle game book. Um, you know, may maybe knight d2, but actually queen queen c2 is chosen, which loses focus a bit on the d4 square. You know, the queen was on d4, and actually it's now uh, the the centre of attack. The central stage is now taken for the d4 square for black to attack d4 now. Uh, so it's caused this interruption and now that's exploited with c5. Okay, white now uh, goes on a bit of an adventure, adventurous gambit, which I guess is, is theoretical as well. He plays d5 um, and Adam snaps this up and um, off the CD, he doesn't play uh, knight takes d5 immediately. I think there's a disaster with queen e4 check. So that's check and also this diagonal. No, instead he must cov cover this diagonal first if he's going to try and munch this pawn. So he plays actually the move bishop b7, which really literally is threatening now to take the pawn because there's no there's no problem with queen e4, just queen e7 or something. So the pawn's actually threatened, but white makes it a true gambit now. Um, okay, white here played <coughs> bishop g2. And um, now Adam snaps the pawn. <coughs> And white castled, and we have bishop e7. So a pawn up for black. Where is the white compensation here? Well, there might be pressure on the d file. There's lagging uh, development here. Um, okay. So rook d1, knight c6. Clever little trick uh, here because if rook takes d5, we have knight b4 hitting uh, the queen. And the rook. So rook takes d5 is not possible. So Adams has managed to develop a piece now uh, on the queen side, another one, and threatening this nasty looking knight b4 at the same time. So b4 is b4 square is taken away from black. And now the knight just retreats cozily to c7. 
So Adams is you know potentially prepared to play d5 at some point, but maybe castles and bishop f6 were also good ideas. Uh, knight c3, actually black gets on and castles now. And now white kind of highlights uh, d5, wants to sort of discourage d5 maybe from black. So he plays actually the move e4. Adams now continues d6. Okay, so maybe against e5, trying to discourage e5 at some point. b4, that's interesting. The bishop might occupy this diagonal to try and attack the black king. Adams actually just takes that pawn, um, and, and, and it is another gambit. Knight takes b4, so two pawns down. What has white got to show of it? He's got a little bit of temporary pressure here. But if it can be squashed, black's going to be better. A5, so two pawns down. Okay, bishop e3. So the pressure's mounting though on black's queen side. So Adams defends b6 with a centralizing move, knight e6. So he's defending that. And the knight is prepared now maybe to come to c5 too as well, if needed, once, once this queen comes off the firing line of the rook. So knight d5, and um, bishop takes d5 is played. Remember, two pawns up for black, and he's got a reinforcement now of, of c5 with these two pawns. And the d file's just been um, shut out from the rook. So it's very comfortable now for black, just two pawns up here. So what a successful opening, it seems. What has white got to show for it? Well, White now sort of goes on the attack. Maybe he's thinking, you know, knight g5, the queen. <laughs> I don't know. Rook e8, rook a3. Yeah, I think I think it's now lost. So knight g5 does threaten queen h7, so that has to be parried. g6 seems adequate, and that's what Adams plays. Bishop d4, okay. Is there an issue here? The rook now swings uh, again. Preparing for a mass centralization one day once you know bishop d4 rook e7 maybe coming down to e1 now get into that center so rook f3 okay a little bit of pressure building up it also of course defends f7 as well as being a positional it's also tactical for f7 against this f file pressure so uh, bishop e5 black still solid here though bishop h3 there might be something building up, but it's difficult to see exactly what. I'm not sure there's there's too many concrete threats now. Bishop f6. And now in this position, Adams gives back a bit of the material. Uh, not so generously, because really it, it seems even clearer now. To avoid facing these attacking bits, Adams sacrifices the exchange for a pawn now. So bang, exchange for a pawn. And he's really got very little issues now with his king safety. He's removed the bishop pair from white. He's got an extra pawn. The knights are still nice. These these guys are prepared for the end game. Okay, check. Queen f6. White doesn't want to trade queens here. Now we see h5. So as if g4 might be discouraged as well. The queen's very nice here on this diagonal. Queen b5. Now a centralizing move because the knight can swing into the center if needed. Knight c2. How does white defend against that? He moves the rook. But now knight d4. Big knight in the center. Not minding about losing b6, incidentally. Because also he's on f3 now. Queen f3, nasty threat. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm rescheduled. Um, this, this is unfortunately there was a blitz tournament last night. I've, I've rescheduled for tonight. Um, I think Andrews is at this. Isn't it later, or is it actually at the same time now? I'm only going on till um, nine o'clock London time. Is his at the same time? I'm sorry if it is. I thought his was later. No. Um. So uh, queen takes b6, check. 
wins a pawn and it's actually a really crushing attack with the two knights now check and another centralizing move now is played to threaten uh, mating one remember the rooks like attacked so this next move um, threatens mating one knight e4 because the threat queen takes g3 mate uh, but also it's um, protecting the rook and attacking the queen and the, the amusing thing about this is that the point of h5 is also revealed it covers g4 and white played now queen takes f2 allowing knight takes f2 mate the king's actually just been mated here there's no, no escape square so that's quite an amusing end to the game knight f2 mate so a strange game with black seemingly um, nicking a pawn early on uh, let's have a quick um, review of, of this game uh, okay so a Queen's Indian so b6 remember the candidate squares for attack seems to be e4 and c4 with this system and maybe it's not so dull to play as black then if you've got these options and you're aware of them so bishop a6 is an exciting option to bishop b7 uh, so still trying to dismantle white center to try and target either d4 or c4 or sometimes e4 but not here so and now d4 uh, becomes sub subject of attack with this c5 move oh so oh sorry i thought his was later when i looked at the calendar because uh, we're an hour ahead I, eight eight o'clock london time is nine o'clock gmt yeah so um d5 uh he took and he attacked b7 okay so he nicked pawn knight takes d5 there's no problem with queen e4 check so bishop e7 now we see knight c6 a clever little trick you know because knight b4 if rook takes d5 so a3 now so Adam's a pawn up here and white gets a little bit desperate to try and create more um, play uh, with this b4 move so he's losing another pawn um, calling black's bluff maybe to lose another pawn there's a bit of pressure I suppose being exposed on the b file to b6 later uh, but it's two pawns down I mean um, it's two pawns down without totally clear compensation so the b6 pawn is it seems to be effectively defended with knight e6 as well as this possibility now of knight c5 on the horizon white didn't mind closing the d file with knight d5 okay he's got the bishop pair he got the light square bishop away from black but even so um so this next stuff from adams i think is very interesting um after knight g5 he calmly just plays g6 he's not worried too much about this bishop d4 rook f3 idea um, he's got an idea to counter sack very soon to neutralize white's attack and this excellent you know defensive or positional move rook a7 not only defending f7 but in some lines after bishop d4 he's going to play rook e7 and rook e1 maybe so rook f3 bishop e5 white doesn't really uh, want to take maybe black can just take with the rook uh, to keep this pawn just blockaded by this pawn if bishop e5 rook e5 i think uh, but now there comes a very clever little trick bishop f6 has a little cunning idea that maybe rook e3 and bishop g5 are on the cards as a counter exchange sack and indeed here it's chosen because it is immediately for a pawn anyway so you know black has now uh, quite a lot of pawns for the exchange free pawns for the exchange in fact so check he doesn't mind getting the queens off white's been removed of of his two bishops as well so h5 okay this problem about b6 though recurs here but it's interesting uh, to see you know black uh, with his knights causing havoc so knight c2 actually one question here what if rook f Three, you see, I think if rook f3, there might have been knight d4 actually, 
forking b5 and f3. So that that would be kind of nasty. Uh, so maybe that's why rook f3 wasn't wasn't used here. So instead, um, rook e8, knight d4 anyway. Not minding losing b6 because the knight's come in for the kill quite quickly now off the check, check, check. And now this this beautiful move, um, not only protecting the rook but attacking the queen, but also leading to this beautiful mate. Okay. So that was one game played by Adams uh, recently in, in the US World Open. Let's have a look at some others. I hope you all enjoyed that one to start off with. Okay. Um, by the way, live stream, I'm just going to make sure I'm on normal quality. So one moment for that. And I'm going to reload another game very shortly. 